great to see everybody uh, this morning, and I'm really excited to be able to, uh, to present. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background on me, um, I've, been, uh, I've been with Google for uh, a little over eight years now, and I've been working within the, uh, the apps for work business the entire time. I presently serve as the uh, director of our sales engineering organization globally, and uh, before that I was head of our uh, product strategy group where I spent a number of years sort of working on where we're headed, where we're going with Google Apps for Work, and uh, working with our engineering and product management teams. Uh, as you probably know, uh, if you look at the suite of tools that we have at Google, uh, we have a whole bunch of capabilities for both consumers and for the enterprise. And what I want to talk about today a little bit is about what we're doing in order to be able to equip the enterprise to be able to increase their engagement and collaborate more effectively for the purpose of being able to build consensus, drive decisions, and be able to move their business forward. And as I've been doing this for a number of years, it's, it's really interesting to note that you know, companies today globally are really moving quickly, right? And that's no surprise, I think, to, you know, to everybody in the audience, is that the pace of change continues to get faster and faster and faster. And we're looking for, and we're looking to partner with companies, and we're looking to be able to find new ways to be able to move our organizations forward in a way that we'll see step change in terms of our productivity, a step change in terms of our ability to be able to make decisions and move quickly and be able to do that uh, um, um, effectively. And if you think about it, we're surrounded by companies and examples where that's happening at, a, at a, almost an alarming rate, right? Uh, I'll give you a couple of examples. If you look at uh, WeChat, right? WeChat was founded in 2011. It's a Chinese company. And you know, between 2011 and 2015, which is just four years, they have over a billion registered users in their environment, and they built their entire infrastructure on the web. So they run no infrastructure on premise. Everything that they're doing is web-based through a, a series of cloud services, and they've reached just in four years to a billion user, users. If you look at uh, Meituan, Meituan is also a Chinese company. They were founded in 2010, and they have 200 million active users. Think about that. 200 million active users, and they are, are across 1,000 cities in China, and they are a group buying service. And then the third example is Freshdesk, which is a customer support um, um, infrastructure tool for companies to be able to use. They were founded in 2010 with eight people. So just five years ago with eight people, and they currently have 59 million end users as an example. So these companies are coming out of nowhere. They are starting in garages. They're starting in small little offices, and they're growing to become significant presence on the web. And they can do that because if you look at the way things are moving today, right, it is almost the cost of, of the computing infrastructure and the ability to do that is, is approaching zero. And they're able to build their applications with a combination of mobile and cloud platform and able to do that in next to no time, right? And if you look at the trends in general, right, we're finding that people are building smaller teams, right? They're, they're building really dynamic go-to-market models, and they're able to reach an agility and a speed to market that we haven't seen in the history of sort of companies since the very beginning. So the landscape is changing, and it's changing dramatically. And then if you add to that the future technologies that companies like Google are bringing to market, things like virtual reality. Uh, the sheer number of connected devices. We're working with companies around the world where they're trying to connect washing machines and you know uh, wearable computers and all sorts of different things to the internet. And then on top of that, if you add technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning, what's happening is there's a landscape of tools and capabilities available to you as an IT organization, available to you as a business that can dramatically impact the way that you go about the process of innovating and creating new solutions and bringing those things to market. The question that I really want to ask and potentially answer today is, 
how do you work with your internal organizations? How do you look at the culture of your teams to be able to leverage the capabilities that are available to you today? And how do you get the most out of this landscape so that you can start being a participant in the process? You can start actively engaging with these tools and capabilities and do it in a way that promotes the creativity, that promotes the interaction, that promotes the consensus, that promotes the decision-making speed that you want to get. At Google, we, we get approached by companies all the time. And one of the first reasons why companies approach us is they say, you know, we look at what you're doing in the space, and we think that Google's pretty innovative, right? And we think you have a culture of innovation, and we'd like to learn more about how you work so that potentially we could learn some lessons and apply that to our business and, and build a spirit of that innovation and incubation. And so what I'd like to do is spend a couple minutes and talk about innovation and, and do that. So the first observation I have is that we all know that innovation cannot be something that you mandate or ordain. Um, innovation is not something that I can just, you know, sort of write a memo to the company and say, okay, starting this afternoon, we're all going to be innovative, right? I think you have to be purposeful about building that culture and evolving that so that you can start to actually think differently and work differently. And we would, we would suggest that innovation is a bit elusive, right? It's one of those magical qualities that it's difficult to define and it's difficult to capture, and it's difficult to bring into our culture as a you know, way to do that. We would also observe that innovation is not a straightforward and easy process, right? Uh, it's messy. It requires you to get dirty. You have to kind of roll your sleeves up and get involved. Um, a lot of times when you're going through a process of innovation and you're building this culture, uh, it's not a straight line. In fact, uh, sometimes you don't even end up where you thought you were. You had a plan to go here, and as you went through and started to develop the ideas, you ended up going in a different direction. And the thing that's most important is that as you start to turn the crank on this new way of thinking and new culture, you recognize that you have to build new muscles. It's like you're building a new exercise or you're starting a new thing. I, uh, I, I like to think that I like to play golf. And uh, if you were to talk to Fernando or Scott McIntyre or any of the people that know me, they wouldn't describe me as a particularly good golfer. They would say, you know, Bill, you're, you know, you're out there trying and it's good, but you really have to build some new muscles and new ways to be able to hit the ball because uh, it's going to take time to develop the skill set if you want to be good at this game. Innovation is the same way. We believe that you have to kind of like dig in and try and as you try, you then start to build these new muscles and start to be able to exercise these new capabilities. And in fact, what you find is that as you go through that process is that it's not a straight line. It's not like I can set an objective, build a plan, and then get there you know, um, you know, with a quick and straight line view. It's going to be a little bit messy and curved. And what's happening in technology today is that all of the vendors, right, our competitors um, across the board are coming to you and saying, we've got the answer, right? We can help you create big ideas. Uh, we can help you focus on execution. We can help you with innovation and disruption. But the reality is it's not that easy, right? What they don't tell you is the how do you do that, right? How do we actually come alongside companies and help them with this process of transforming their culture and making them more effective so they can leverage the innovation that's happening you know, on, the, on the web. Well, the way I think about this is there are a number of trends in the marketplace that are already pointing to the answer. It's not like we invented it. It's not like Google has some unique um, you know, sauce that makes us better than anybody else in this thing. But what we're finding is that we're observing a number of things that are happening that just sort of point to the answer and make the answer somewhat obvious. Let me give you some examples. The first example that I would offer is that people are engaging and in the dialogue from really non-traditional places. Uh, when I first started, uh, I was an Air Force officer in the, in the US. And in doing that, you know, came into a very traditional workplace where you sat in a cube, you had a computer at your desk, 
Um, your meetings were always scheduled in the conference room, and you had a very traditional way of working. That's not the way we work today, right? I'm a, a global traveler. Um, I probably work more from an airport uh, and from, you know, on airplanes than I do any other place in terms of what I do. The second trend that I would observe is that people are connecting and working from non-traditional devices. It used to be that the only device I could work on was my computer at work, right? And if I wanted to get anything done, I would actually go to work and sit in my office and work in that particular device. In today's world, that's not true. Let me give you an example. A couple years ago, I was working with a customer on the west coast of the U.S. I was on the east coast in New York City, and uh, it was a uh, actually it was it was about a Friday night. It was about uh, five o'clock. And I was going to join my family for dinner. It was my it was my daughter's birthday, and so as I'm driving to go pick up my daughter's present at a a, a retail location called Best Buy. I don't know if you guys know Best Buy uh, down in Brazil, but I was going to buy her a computer game. And my wife had said in the morning, "Don't forget to buy the computer game. Like that's your mission. Like if you do anything, that's what you've got to do today." And like any husband, I want to be a good, you know, father and provider and do all those things. And so I, uh, so it's five o'clock, and I'm going to the store to go buy it. And all of a sudden, I remember that I had promised this customer on the West Coast that I would provide him a couple of deliverables, and I would respond by the end of the week to a particular task. Now, in the old days, I would have had to rush back to the office. I would have had to log onto my computer, and I would have had to, you know, do the work, send the deliverable. I would have been late for dinner, and maybe I wouldn't have picked up the package, and my wife would not have been happy, right? That would have created an unhappy home, and my weekend would have been ruined. But in today's world, that's no longer true. I walked into Best Buy. I went over to their Macintosh display, their Apple display. I logged on to Google Apps. I logged into my email system. I logged into Google Drive. I was able to go in and change the spreadsheet, add some things to the file, send an email to John on the West Coast and say, hey, John, I'm finishing up my day in New York. It's, uh, it's great. I had a great conversation yesterday. Here's the two attachments. Uh, uh, they're actually links to Google Drive objects that I want to share with you. If you have any questions, here's my mobile phone. You can reach me over the weekend. Great to talk to you. Talk on Monday. Send the email out. So it's a new way to work and connect, and I was able to then purchase the, uh, the particular game, and oh, by the way, I was able to text my daughter and say, hey, are you guys at the restaurant? Uh, where, which restaurant are you at? So, so that I can arrive on time and everything worked. So what's happening today is that people are integrating their lives with their devices, with their work, and they're creating a new balance. They're creating a new way to collaborate, but do it in a way that fits in with their life so that they can meet the many obligations that life brings us. <laughs> Third observation is that the tools that we use at home, as we all know, are actually outpacing the tools that we're using at work, right? Uh, and a great example I have is the connection I have. This is not a picture of my daughter, but my daughter is uh, in her third year, third year in, in university right now. She's studying fashion design. And uh, if I want to connect with my daughter, right, the way I connect with her is instead of sending her an email or picking up the phone and calling her, I send her an SMS text message or I get on Facebook and post something on Facebook. If I want her attention, that's how I have to do it. In fact, uh, sometimes when I'm speaking at a conference, I did this uh, one time actually, at the very beginning of my speech, I sent her a note in email and I said, her name's Kelly, I said, Kelly, urgent, mom, hospital, call ASAP. Now, that's a mean thing to do to your daughter, right? Uh, to send her that message because, you know, she might get worried because it really wasn't true. And the answer is I didn't get a response at all. And like two days later, she saw the email. She didn't even look at it. At the end of my talk, I sent her a text message using SMS from Google Apps. And when I sent her the message, I said, in six months, when you come home for summer break, what would you like for dinner? And I got an answer in two seconds. She said, I'd really like to have ribs on the barbecue with corn on the cob. And so I then wrote her back and I go, where are you? And she goes, I'm taking an exam in my biology class. And I'm like, you're taking an exam? What are you doing responding to me, right? The culture 
of the millennial generation that's coming into the workplace is using a different set of tools and they're far more connected than people that are in the baby boom generation like myself. So the tools that they use to engage and the style that they use to engage is much more connected than anybody else that we see today. The other thing that's happening is we're finding that companies like Google are, are creating spaces that really bring people together, right? There's a theme of creating, of, of creating spaces where you feel creative, you're connecting with other people, and you're integrating your work and your social life with everything you do. So the argument that I'm making is that the real key to success, the real key to driving productivity and consensus building behavior is really taken from the millennials, the people that are coming to the workplace today, and it really involves active engagement. In fact, I would argue that if you're trying to, to transform your organization, and you think about transformation and you back that up a bit, right? Transformation is really the application of big ideas. The application of big ideas come from raising the level of creativity, and raising the level of creativity comes from engagement where people actually interact and work together. I kind of think of it like this, is that we engage, and through that engagement we come up with creative ideas. Some of those ideas we want to apply and try to innovate in our practice, which leads to transformation. That's pretty obvious, I think that makes sense, but there's a problem. And the problem is, is that the tools that we're using today have really not changed the way we work in 30 years. Again, I'll use the example of me being an Air Force officer. Uh, one of the first jobs I had was in the intelligence business, where we were actually evaluating foreign weapon systems. All right, so think about, you know, as a U.S. Air Force officer looking at, uh, you know, another Air Force and looking at their air, air, airplanes and trying to decide you know, how good those planes are and how they might work in the air and all those types of things. And what we would do is we would produce an intelligence report. So we would go in and create a document, right, in Microsoft Word, very much like you would today if you were doing an assessment of technology. And we would then, you know, write down all sorts of things about that weapon system. This is how fast we think it can fly. This is how big it is. Um, this is the kind of engines it has. This is the materials they're using. Um, uh, here is the tactics that they use, etc., when they engage in air-to-air -air combat, all those types of things. And then what we would do is we would then send that document around to have all the experts comment on it, right? This is, a, this is a process we all do every day, right? So we create a document or a PowerPoint or a spreadsheet. We then typically send it out an email to communicate with people. They all then comment on that object and then they bring all their things back to me and I have, I have to consolidate that content together to come up with an assessment. And if you look at the tools that the landscape is providing for you today, all they do is instrument that process, right? So I use Microsoft Word to create the document. I then send it out an email or I put it on SharePoint and then I, people use track changes to comment on it and they send it back to me and I get version 1.3.2 and 1.3.7 and I have to then bring all those together and we don't think that's a great way to communicate. That's not a great way to collaborate. We actually think that ineffective collaboration slows you down. And our argument would be that you're actually a lot more productive if you do this, right? If I got those people together in a room and we sat down together for a period of four hours, we would actually make a lot more progress. We would start with what do we understand about that particular aircraft? We would then come up with a hypothesis and a thesis about the way it works. We would then agree on principles and maybe even debate some of the different ideas that are thrown out there. We then might choose a course of action if we're putting together a plan for what we're going to do. And then we would walk out with consensus, right? Typically the number one rule when you walk out is that maybe it wasn't your idea, but we all agree when we leave that this is the right course of action. It's the right risk to take. It's the right thing to do, and we want to get everybody in sync doing it. We've well, already built consensus because you met together. We would offer that people are most productive when they create, think, and reason together in real time, collaborating the way that look, you know, to, to be able to achieve shared goals. 
So if you think about that, what does that active engagement look like and what would the tooling be to be able to make that work? Well, we believe that when you're creating, you need to create together, right? We shouldn't be working independently and doing comments and changes. We should actually be working at the same time in the same document. A good example, a lot of times companies, especially governments, will give us a very large uh, request for proposal, an RFP, and it could be a couple of hundred pages. And in the old style of work, I would have taken that document, I would have then burst it into different documents, I would have then sent it out to experts within my organization to answer, they would have then been working on their piece of the pie, they would have sent back the results to me, I would have then assembled those together, and then I would have had to go through and edit and comment and send it out again for comment for people to go do this. That process would take a week at least if we were working full time to be able to get that done. In today's world, all I have to do is take that request for proposal, put it in Google Drive, send it out, a note out to my team saying, we need to get this done in 24 hours. My team will jump into the document and literally they'll find their place. I don't even have to referee. I don't have to say, Joe, I want you to take care of security. Karen, I want you to take care of the network uh, topology. Um, I want you to take care of the tools. I don't have to do that because people will naturally gravitate to their area of expertise and they'll naturally begin to collaborate. And what happens is this, the security guy gets in and starts to answer questions and realizes that there's a legal question that he can't answer. So he'll add somebody to the conversation and say, Joanne, you're in legal, can you give me an opinion about this particular issue? And literally within a 24 hour period, we'll go from a blank page to a document that has the best ideas from the best people in my organization brought together in one single view, everybody working together, everybody aware of what's going on. So active engagement is engaging in all dimensions of your work to include how you work in documents. The second part of active engagement is really meeting face to face and working together. So instead of dialing a phone number and typing in a leader code and a conference code number and going through that, that, that energy to be able to connect with people, we believe that you need to be able to just click a button wherever you are on any device and connect with your colleagues. Um, as I said earlier, I run a global organization. So a lot of times I'm on the way to work or I'm on the way home from work and I simply go to my calendar on my phone, I click the link for the hangout, I take my phone and I stick it on the dashboard and while I'm driving home, I'm engaged with one of my, um, one of my team members on a particular project or a customer problem or helping them with a peer review or an initiative that they're taking on. But I'm doing it face to face. They see me, I see them. It makes that ability to build trust, to be able to build intimacy and togetherness in a way that you can't do on the phone and you can't do if you're located in different offices around the world. And so if you look at LATAM and Latin America and the way you do business, and if you look at globally how you engage with the rest of the world, Connecting face to face is a critical element of your ability to work. Another dimension of working together is everybody having the same view of the assets and the materials that we create as we work. How many times have you had to go to your local desktop, go to the file server, go to the portal, go to uh, the, the SharePoint instance in your environment, and there's probably more than one, to be able to try to find a document, find a video, find a presentation, right? You shouldn't have to do that. It should all be in one place, shared together where everybody can see it with the right security controls so that I, control, I can control who can see it and who can't. So working together means working on the same content with the same view from any device. And then obviously I've got to be able to um, limit and control what people can see. So I'm going to say, I'm going to share this document out with Mike and John. Mike, I'm going to let you be an editor. John, I'm going to let you comment. Scott, you are a viewer and you can be able to follow our, our progress, but you're not going to actually do any editing on this. 
perhaps maybe I want to share it with a time uh, uh, delay. So what I may say is, okay, I'm going to allow you to start looking at this document starting on Monday, and you can share it for two weeks, and after two weeks, I'm going to revoke that permission. Maybe I'm working with a supplier, and I'm providing them some pricing information that's sensitive. Maybe I'm working with a financial institution, and I have sensitive uh, financial data in that topic, and I don't want that to go on forever. So you have to be able to share, but you have to be able to limit that collaboration and make sure you can control that experience. We also want to work on the same page, right? So we talked earlier about the version 1.3.7 and 1.3.2 and all the different versions. Why do we do that? Why don't we just have one piece, one document, one spreadsheet, which serves as our go-to place to look up what the status is? to be able to see what's happening in real time and to know that when my colleagues are working on this around the world that it's up to date with the latest of everything that everybody has to offer. And then of course, I think I mentioned this already, but we need to actually adopt these new technologies in a way that makes it easy to work. Now, it's one thing to be able to do a hangout, but it's more than that. It's not just about doing face-to-face -face conversations, but it's about doing what we're doing right now where we have an asset, in this case, a presentation, where I'm walking through a set of slides and you are all participating with me as you watch in a big group. So I think there's over 100 people in the room, as, as that's what Fernando said, and we're actually engaging together, right? I'm sitting here in San Francisco and you guys are in, in Sao Paulo and we're actually having an engagement right now and so we're able to collaborate effectively and exchange ideas and communi communicate together in a way that we simply can't do, and it's easy to do. I didn't have to go through a, a, a hard technology thing. I just went to my browser, clicked the meeting, shared my presentation, and now we're together working. And then lastly, as part of this, not only do I have to be able to secure the content, but I also have to make sure that I have the compliance infrastructure to be able to meet regulatory rules, right? Uh, the government or the financial regulators or the healthcare regulators or the other organizations, they want us to be able to store content and preserve it. They want us to be able to uh, establish a matter and do, um, uh, and be able to establish a matter so that we can put people on legal hold. Uh, they want us to be able to search the repository of information if there's an investigation and be able to produce that. We want to be able to uh, create trusted domains between different organizations so we can share safely. So there's a large number of things that we want to be able to do so that we can secure this environment and make it so that when we do collaborate in these different methods, we can do so effectively, right? So we can have this experience right here, but do it in a way to where we can do it safely with all the security controls that you would expect to come from an enterprise solution. So the argument that I'm trying to make is that it's not about whether I can create a bullet that blinks and is in you know, purple and has a 3D effect, right? It's about actually having a set of tools that work together to help me connect, to help me communicate, to help me interact with others in a way that's going to help me drive decisions, build consensus, and actually move faster. Remember at the beginning of the conversation that uh, we spent a fair amount of time suggesting that these companies that are coming online and using the web are moving at a, at a fast rate, right? We believe that part of that is the tools that they're using to build and construct their environment, but the other part of that is that they're working with a new style and that they're collaborating more effectively than established companies, and established companies need to begin to uh, uh, dabble and experiment and build new muscles around this integrated collaborative experience. So what can you expect if you were to adopt the tools that Google provides and enable this collaboration? Well, we would argue that what will happen is you'll see impact right away, that your projects will move faster. So you'll finish things in weeks, not months, days, not weeks, hours, not, not days of the week, right? This natural collaboration will actually add agility and speed to your business. That you'll save time in everyday things. Uh, let me give you an example of something we're working on. 
Um, how many times do you get this email where an email comes in, you've been you know, working on a project with three people, all right? So you've been working with, uh, with Karen, with Scott, and Fernando, all right? So you've been having a series of meetings, and you have documents you're working on, and someone sends you a note and says, hey, can you send me Karen's contact information? So what do you do? You typically go into your contact manager. You've got probably maybe 15 or 20 Karens that you know, and you go find the right Karen. It's Karen Smith. And then you grab her contact record, and then you open up the email, and then you attach that contact record to the email, and you send it back to Joe, and you say, here is Karen's information. Why can't the system help you with that to save you a little bit of time? That wasn't a big task. It might have taken me a minute to do that, maybe a minute and a half. But what if, what if the system said, well, I know that you and Joe and, and, and uh, Fernando have been working with Karen over the last two days. You probably mean Karen Smith in your contact record. You met with Karen yesterday afternoon. So why don't I go into your contact record and suggest Karen Smith as the response. And so when you actually hit the email reply button, it automatically comes up and says, would you like to send Karen Smith's contact information? I hit yes, and boom, it goes back to Joe. And I did that in two seconds. So I went from a minute and a half to two seconds. Now, if you add that up over the course of a day, over a course of 10,000 employees, and if I do that a thousand different ways in the, in the tool, and I look at the way you work and make you more productive, collaboration and that ability to have the system come in and help you really makes a difference. The other thing which I think I've hinted at before is that you can now start to adopt new work styles, and you can actually start to integrate the things that you do in the office with the things that you do home because you can then focus on what matters. Maybe you have an important phone call or a conference call that you need to make and you feel like you need to be in the office and you should stay late. Now you can go home and you can interact with your kids, interact with your family, do what matters, but still be able to make the call and interact in, a, in an intimate way because I can do a hangout with them and actually do things naturally. And it becomes part of our culture. Um, you can see, right, if you look behind me, right, I'm sitting here in my basement, and I've got a little bit of a workout room, and it's 4 o'clock in the morning. Actually, it's about 4.35 or 4, 4.45 right now, and I'm able to work and engage with you, and it doesn't matter. We can do it from anywhere at any time, from any device, and do that effectively. So, you know, don't take my word for it, but the reality is this engagement principle really matters. PwC... Uh, one of our partners who is adopting Google Apps in their own organization, as well as as they consult with large companies around the world, they actually looked at this and did a study on what does it mean if I really get people together and start working more effectively. And what they found is a dramatic change in behavior and productivity. They found that they saw a 32% increase in the number of ideas that were generated. Remember, if I create... I can innovate, and if I innovate, I can see transformation. They saw a 27% decrease in the duplication of the tasks because people knew what other people were doing. They weren't replicating what their, their uh, counterparts were doing. They found a 34% less time to find critical information and, more importantly, to find expertise. So it's not just about finding the, the, the document. <laughs> it's about finding the author of the document. It's about connecting with that person and exchanging ideas and benefiting from their experience, their expertise, their knowledge, and their ability to actually help collaborate with you across the company and maybe even outside of the company. They found a 30% increase in employee satisfaction. So what happens is people that are connected, that are working together, are happier and they like working more, and they're more productive because they're happier. So engagement really matters, and we believe that the tools that you choose are an important element of that collaboration experience, and what we'd like to invite you to do is join us on this journey and, and work with us so that we can you know, sort of go down this road together and collaborate so you can actually benefit from these same uh, uh, particular instances. So I really appreciate the opportunity for us to get together 
and share a little bit about some of the things we're thinking and the way we view the market and how we view the space around collaboration. And I don't know, Fernando, if we have any time for questions, uh, but uh, I would like to go ahead and conclude my talk.